Welcome to Electron Line. Here's a very interesting example of how to find the area underneath a curve or between two curves. But in this case, even though it's not between two curves, I still thought it was a very interesting uh, type of problem where you can see that we're trying to find the area of a sector of a circle. And so there we're going to subdivide it into two sections, A1, which is simply this triangle right here, and then A2, which is that last curved part. And notice that the area of A1, it's sim since it's simply a triangle, that's going to be one half the base times the height. And so the base is going to be R times the cosine of theta. The height is going to be R times the sine of theta. So this is simply the area A1. We will need integration for the second area, A2, where we're going to integrate from x equals R cosine theta to x equals R over this uh, region right here. And notice that the height of that area element is going to be y. And since the, the edge here is defined by an equation of a circle, we can see that y is simply going to be equal to the square root. We can write up here, y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. So your area element dA is going to be this times dx. And so then our integral, the integral from r cosine theta to r of y dx is going to become equal to that. So what is the integral of the square root of r squared minus x squared? Well, that will be equal to x divided by 2 times the square root of r squared minus x squared plus, and that will then be r divided by, let's see, that would be r squared divided by 2 uh, times the inverse sine of the ratio of x over r. And that will have to be evaluated from r cosine theta to r, and then once we've evaluated this, we then add a1 to it, and that will have the complete area of that sector. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the upper limit, and then we plug in the lower limit. When we plug in the upper limit, we get the following. I guess I'll need some extra room here. So this is equal to, plug in the upper limit, we get r divided by 2 times the square root of r squared minus r squared, so that term will go to 0, plus r squared over 2 times the inverse sine of x over r. Now, x will become r, so it'll be r over r, so it'll be the inverse sine of 1. Subtract from that, when we plug in the lower limit, so we get uh, r times the cosine of theta divided by 2, times this quantity, which will be the square root of r squared minus r squared times the cosine square of theta, like that. And then plus, let me put in, uh, hmm, let me put in a line here, because otherwise it's going to get confusing. There we go. Put a line over here. And then plus, when we plug in the lower limit in here, so that will be r squared over 2 times the inverse sine of r cosine theta over r. Okay, and now let me close the bracket because we're subtracting this entire quantity right here. Now we'll go ahead and simplify this. It doesn't look very clean here, but let's say when we simplify it, notice that this becomes zero. So this is equal to zero. And then here, the inverse sine of one well, that would be 90 degrees or pi over 2. So this becomes plus uh, 1 half r squared times pi over 2. Well, that will be pi over 2, not, there we go, not theta. There we go, pi over 2. And then when we simplify what we have in here, let's see. So here we have an r squared minus r squared. We can factor that out. That becomes a r times this. This becomes minus r squared divided by 2 times the cosine of theta, and then we have 1 minus the cosine square of theta left, which is the sine square of theta. Take the square root of that, that gives us the sine of theta. And notice we have this term right here, which will be minus this, and then when we add this term right here, which is a positive of that, that will eventually cancel out, so keep that in mind. And then we still have this portion right here, which is plus, we have uh, r squared over 2, times the inverse sine, the r's cancel out of the cosine of theta. Inverse sine of the cosine of theta. And close bracket, so this is all subtracted from this. 
All right, let's see if we can rewrite this portion right here. So this becomes equal to one half or one quarter r squared times pi minus. And so this will eventually cancel out. Cosine of theta times the sine of theta. And then here plus r squared over 2 times the inverse sine of. And instead of writing this as a cosine of theta, we're going to write this as the sine of 90 degrees minus theta, or instead of writing minus 90 degrees, we can say pi over 2, like this, and closing bracket. So now you can see that when you take the inverse sine of the sine of this, you simply get the angle back, so this becomes equal to 1 quarter r squared pi minus, we have r squared over 2 cosine theta sine theta, and here we have plus r squared over 2 times pi, so the, arc, the inverse sine of this gives us the angle back, so it will be this times pi over 2, that will be 1 quarter r squared, and uh, well, let's see here, this minus makes this minus, and this minus makes this minus, this should be minus as well, 1 quarter r squared times pi, and then this minus times this minus makes this a plus, that will be 1 half r squared theta. There we go. So that is equal to, where are we? Here, A2. So A2 will be this small little area right here is defined by this quantity. A1 was defined by this quantity. So now we can say that A is equal to, just simply A, is equal to uh, the sum of the two, A1 plus A2. And notice it'll be this quantity plus this quantity, but notice that this here is negative r squared over 2 cosine theta sine theta. This is positive r squared over 2 cosine theta sine theta, so those cancel out. And here we have 1 quarter r squared pi minus 1 quarter r squared pi. Those cancel out as well, so this cancels out with this. This here cancels out with this. And so finally, all you have left is that the two areas together add up to 1 half theta r squared or r squared theta. I don't know what the best way to write it is. Uh, sounds better if we write it r squared theta. I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter. r squared theta, like that. And so you can see that the area of a sector of a circle can indeed be found to be one half r squared theta or one half theta r squared. And yeah, that is actually correct. And notice some clever ways of handling that, a little bit of integration. And that's the way it's done.